worry, I can fix it. Hey, Brian here. And I assume the reason why you're watching this video is because you have a stuck slide and it's stuck in like we did. And yet you've determined that it's a motor failure. Now you've got this chicken and egg thing going where how do you get the slide out to make the motor repair? Because you've got to get it out to get the pin out. And you have to have it in to get the motor out. And so, like me, you may have found that there really wasn't much out there. So I, I made this video to cover how we were able to forcibly move this slide out. Now this video also covers um, the actual motor replacement that we did. There's tons of videos out there on how to do that that are really good. But because I was going through the process, I figured I would do that as well. Now this is our 2018 Tiffin Allegro Red 33AA. And it has two of these Schwintec in-wall type slides. Now it's important to distinguish that because there's lots of Schwintec actuators out there. And this discussion really only applies to the in-wall type. Pushing the slide out probably applies to other slides as well, but I don't know. Recent trip, of course, we went on. Everything worked before we started. Got there, slide wouldn't go out. Not that big of a deal. Big, big of a deal because we uh, didn't need that little bit of space that this offers inside. So when we got home, I went and did my research on online forums, uh, YouTube videos, and uh, found a lot of really great information. But I also found a lot of disinformation. Now, some of the best stuff you'll find is by Darren at MyRVWorks.com. And uh, the Lippert Schwintec uh, videos are pretty good, actually, but they're kind of done in a lab situation, and they don't really work you through about how you're going to solve this problem. So with some of Darren's uh, troubleshooting techniques, I was able to determine that I had a bad motor. Now, the controller uh, blinks told me that it was bad, you know, shorted wires or something like that, but I guess a bad motor... Um, gives you that same result. But regardless, uh, it was a bad motor. Uh, so I found a lot of forum posts with exact, you know, asking the question of the exact problem. Hey, my slide's stuck in, how do I get it out? The, and, uh, and the motor's broken. And uh, one of my favorite responses is, press the button six on the controller six times and on the seventh press, hold it down and you can put it into a manual override mode, which is true. But guess what? The motor's broken. And then others would say, well, you pop the motors up and then you can release it so that you can push it out, which may be true. I'm not sure that it, actually there's still a lot of friction, but that's true. But still, I can't move it to get at the motor screw to get it out to pop the motors up. Catch 22. Then I found discussions about brute force just pushing on the thing using a bunch of people. And I, that, of course, interested me because that seems to be the only way this is going to happen. So I uh, came up with this idea of putting a jack in there and pushing on it. And I first called Tiffin to make sure that all my assumptions about the Schwintec motor was right and uh, that I could push on the vertical of the trim in there without damaging things. And they confirmed that that would be okay. So based upon that, I came up with the solution shown in this, in this video. But before we get into the details, I'm going to have my sexy Australian AI assistant show you just why it takes so much force to move these darn things. Thank you, Brian. You're awesome. And for those of you who want to skip this technical section, please use the chapter markers. Now let's get into the scintillating details on resistive forces. This is a representation of the slide out motor, rack, and pinion gear as viewed from the top. The motor was removed, and a torque wrench was used to measure the resistance to spin the motor via the motor's internal compound gears. It took up to 10 foot-pounds to cause the motor to spin. The gear has a 1-inch pitch diameter, so the fulcrum point is half of an inch. That equates to as much as 240 pounds of force required just to spin the motor. Additionally, there is friction in the gears, track, and rubber seals. With the motor removed, one human pushing hard on the slide-out yielded no movement. Though not directly measured, the frictional resistance of the slide assembly appears to be well over 100 pounds. With the motor in, pushing on the slide-out must overcome the total of these two forces. It is estimated that with the motor in place, the total force to move one side of the slide out manually can be as much as 400 pounds. And this is not easy with just human power. Not even for Brian. Now, on to the repair. 
we tried to push the slide out manually by leaning against it and putting our feet against the bed, pushing very hard, but we could not get it to move. So I came up with a solution to push a little harder. This is a bottle jack out of my pickup truck. And I've got a two by six positioned right in the middle, um, vertically from the top to the bottom because we want to push evenly on the rack system. Got some foam packing plates in there to help distribute the load and obviously protect the wood. And then uh, two by four running across to push from wall to wall. Make sure that that's perfectly level. Notice all the shims that are there to hold it in place. And I've deployed the opposite side slide all the way out and then straddled it with a two by six with some packing pads to protect it. And uh, that two by four is now in line straight with where we're going there. So everything needs to be straight and true. Otherwise you might get a buckle and it pop loose on you. With the jack set up in place on the non-working side, I've unplugged the motor controller from that side and left the other motor plugged in. And we will be pushing on this a little bit and then use the powered side on the other side to open it and uh, back and forth, back and forth till we get it to slide out. Now I'm going to go deploy the opposite side. Just a little bit. I need to make sure this doesn't get uh, racked up as we're moving it out. Go slow, just a few turns each time. When you go to press the out button again, it won't go. I think that has something to do with the synchronization process. So you need to press the in button for a little bit and then uh, press the out button on the opposite side. Just keep working it out. And then uh, I'm also gonna go outside and check and make sure that the uh, that it's even. I got, got back from the outside and uh, this side's a little behind, so we need to go crank it a little bit further. I'm being a little too conservative, not wanting to jam it. That side uh, tends to lock up, so you can tell when it's jammed pretty good. This side you wouldn't know was jammed because you're pushing it, so you want to be a little careful. Whoop, that's exactly what I was concerned about. I think it must have loosened up when it first started going. It was very difficult, as I said, to get it moving, but now I think it's starting to slide along on its own. So, um, lesson learned there, get, get some lateral bracing in here. As I said, when you're doing this, you got to make sure it's all level and even because otherwise this is exactly what's going to happen. So we'll get something and uh, put it in there to prevent that from happening. All right, the good news is it's starting to slide easier, but the bad news is it tends to let the jack get loose on you there. You can hear the... Uh, gears and the motors turning in there each time it slides out each iteration. You just keep working it back and forth until you get it out as far as you need to make the repair. For this one it's a 18 inch slide I think or 16 I'm not sure but uh, it's not very deep so I need to split the difference so that I can get access to the outside screw that you need to take out to get to the motor and then uh, also be able to get inside and get the motor out. So I'm going to keep going until I split the difference. I've worked it back and forth until I've gotten about the distance I want, though one lesson learned is I started with the jack had maybe an inch more. It could have been collapsed and then cut the board um, to match that better so you could get the full extent of the jack. One of the things I noticed as I was pushing it out was that it would hang up and act like it didn't want to go because you're pushing against a rack and pinion gear trying to spin a tiny gear and you can hear it whirring when it goes and slides out. 
Sometimes I just leave it and walk around and the next thing I know it'd be pushing itself out on its own. Also, I found that um, running it in and out alternately using the slide controller um, helped jostle it along. But you want to make sure you just inch it along a little bit at a time and take your time. It's going to take 15-20 minutes to get it out um, back and forth. Depending upon your, um, whether you have a switch or one of these things, what I did find, and I, like I said earlier, I think it has something to do with the syncing process. I found that, you know, sometimes I'd press the button and it wouldn't go anywhere, so I'd press it twice and you know, mess around with it until it goes where you want. So, again, um, don't, don't rack it as you're going along. Just pulse it a little bit. Jack on the other side. Pulse, jack on the other side. Now, I'm working on the back... Uh, motor here. This is towards the back of the coach and I know from earlier looking around opening up that door to the washer dryer I can reach in there pretty easy to get at the motor and as I was doing this work I did notice that if you were doing this front slide and it just depends upon your permutations of how your coach was built I'd never be able to reach back in there very easily um, maybe from up there to get at that motor. Luckily I don't have to get that motor. So if you're working on this one you might have to um, slide it out, take your screw out up there, and then bring it back in again. Now, that's a whole other matter of bringing it back in. I don't know what you'd do if uh, you were trying to bring this thing back in and, and just pushing on it from the outside because this is a small slide and uh, it takes an incredible amount of force to get it to move. So, if you got a larger slide and trying to push it in, um, good luck. Maybe luck has nothing to do with it. So our situation was a slide stuck in and motor failed. I was thinking to myself, I was, I was making this video, well, what would happen if the slide was stuck out? So you can't get at the motors inside because they're behind the wood panels. And so you'd need to push it in about halfway to be able to get at the motors and make the repair. Now the slide's out, so you can get the pin out first, so that's good. But then you'd have to push the slide in. So what I would do is a very similar situation as I'd move the motor home with the slide out carefully and I'd drive up next to a um, post pole wall, something really firm, and then I would put up a board with the padding on it here and use a jack to push it back in in the same way. And now let's go replace that motor. The slide is now manually pushed out far enough to gain access to what we need to do here. The screw in question is right behind here and uh, I verified with Tiffin we are going to have to remove this plate, which includes this upper thing here. So you keep moving it out until you get enough room to do your work in here. Um, don't cut the silicone, just unscrew it and I guess you can just fold it back and then gain access to the screw up there. With all the screws removed, including those up there on the upper flange, you can fold this thing back without taking the silicone out and then get at the motor retention screw right there. That's a number one square drive in this particular case. All right, so this turned out to be a lot more difficult than anticipated. This is just really a terrible design on Schwintech's part. Overall, the fact that you have to get in here to get this out in the first place. But anyway, the screw pulled through the rubber as it came out and then it's blocking the screw from coming out. So I'm gonna try, I tried pliers on it and I couldn't get in there and get it out. I'm gonna try to reach in there and pull it out with that. Well, that didn't work. This turns out to be quite difficult and it turns out also that the screw is already stripped out and I noticed other people online uh, mentioning that that happened. So I'll probably have to replace it with a bigger screw when I go to put it back in but this stiff rubber is preventing it from coming out. So I clipped it and then I made this little extraction tool here, piece of quarter inch rod, ground it flat, bent it, and put a little groove in it with the file. So I'll use that as a prying device to pull it out now that the uh, rubber's been clipped. All right, that worked pretty good. Uh, I couldn't get my power driver in there, so I used a handheld uh, screwdriver and then pried on it a little bit as you started backing it out so you know it's stripped out but it's also there's resistance of it coming out as well as the rubber trying to stop it so between the two of these in there it backs it out you can see how fine that that thread is so 
um, and aluminum is very thin. I didn't make a video of the actual motor removal, but uh, there's lots of videos online that explain this. As I understand it, the newer models have this slot already out, and the older ones don't. So if you don't have a slot, you got to cut it yourself or do some other things. But anyway, there's lots of videos online on how to get that out. Just take a screwdriver in there, and once that uh, screw on the outside is out, it does just pop up and is easily removed, assuming, of course, you have access on this side of the slide. I got the motor out, and this is what I found, which is obviously my problem. I'm not sure how this broke, but that's the main lead to the motor. And uh, I didn't notice when I first took it out, but as I was looking at it, I realized the encoder magnet for the Hall Effect sensors uh, had fallen off. When I was examining it during my first analysis and uh, hooking it up for connection to see if it worked, I had also noticed that the cover was sitting loose so somehow this got damaged in there i really don't know how um, people talk about how if the uh, retention screw comes out these can uh, pop up and then start rotating and uh, rip the wires out and cause those kinds of problems but uh, the screw was definitely in there and retaining it and i had to remove it to get the motor up and out the motor still works i uh, connected it up using the same method as I use for troubleshooting it to a 12 volt battery. And then if I push this back onto the uh, connector there. So the motor's functional, but it's uh, useless since this is broken and I don't really think that's something that can be repaired. So I'll order a new motor. This is the motor we removed, checked up in a vise here because while we were waiting for the new motor to arrive, I wanted to try to figure out what is causing so much resistive force trying to push that slide out. Now this is a compound gear motor. So there's the actual motor and this part of it is a gearbox. And when you go to spin this, it's going to spin this very, very fast, which offers up a lot of resistance. I took a nut and I bored it out so it fit the end of the shaft. And then I drilled and tapped uh, hole in here for a set screw. This allow me to put a torque wrench on it and measure how much it takes to rotate it. And I was a bit surprised by what I found out. It turns out it when you move it clockwise, it can take uh, as much as 25 foot pounds to turn it. And when you go the other ways, it uh, more like 10 foot pounds. Now in our case, uh, we were pushing the slide out, which was causing the motor to, to uh, turn counterclockwise. So that was the value we were seeing. So if you're pushing this thing back in, you'd have over two and a half times as much motor resistive force as trying to push it out. Also of note is that the resistance wasn't consistent. Sometimes it would turn really easily. Like right now it's binding and then boom, it'll go on through and then it'll turn more easily. This explains why I noted the slide suddenly making better progress moving out than at other times. <clears throat> I don't know if this is a function of this particular motor or if all motors of this type are similar, but regardless, it is clear that it can take at least 10 foot pounds to turn it. The drive gear only has a half inch, that goes on here, has a half inch um, amount of leverage. So at 10 foot pounds of torque, it would take over 200 pounds of force just to spin the motor. Now that I have an idea of what the motor torque resistance is, I wanted to see how much resistance the slide in general has to offer. Um, it's indicated that you can take the motors out and that'll make it easier to move the slide. So the motor's out on this side waiting to be uh, repaired. And I got in here and put my back into it and pushed really hard and I was unable to get it to move at all. Now the uh, rack and pinion gear are still up in place up there and then there's a rack and pinion gear down below and then you've got your rubber slide seals and then just the weight of the unit on the rails. So those all together add up to be a fair amount of force preventing you from opening this thing. All right, the new motor came in, bought it on Amazon. Uh, it's not the original manufacturer, it's Nova Parts. Uh, the model numbers do match and the uh, torque value is uh, high 
and it's a 500 to 1 ratio, which is what's needed for this. Dimensionally, everything else looks the same. This one did come with this black plastic on the outside of it. Some of the comments on Amazon stated that they just cut that off. Uh, I may see about putting it in with it on there. Maybe I'll just cut these holes out. I've uh, got it connected up to test leads and I've checked it in forward and reverse to make sure it works. Plus we'll be using that to jog the shaft as we go to install it because the gear won't be lined up, the slot in the gear won't be lined up and you got to jog it forward and backwards until you can find that and uh, line it up and then drop it into place. So that's about how fast it moves. I tried to fit it in there and it won't fit. It's a very, very tight squeeze to get these things in and out. Um, so I went ahead and cut the black plastic off and then I peeled the manufacturer sticker off and uh, put it on there in case we need to know about that in the future. Super tight fit. Um, I'm going to take a screwdriver and pry against that rail a little bit because I can't get it to push up that last little bit there. All right, that was quite difficult to get in. Um, I had to pry against the uh, metal up there and the slide to get there to be enough gap to get that started. And then once I got the bottom, got the top up there and then the bottom up high enough, I used a screwdriver to pry it up and then pop it in. Uh, obviously be very careful with the top up there. Don't let it hang up on anything and get pinched. So watch that as you're putting in there. You can see it's dropped down, ready to go into the holes. Now I need to jog it so it'll wind up the shaft. Okay, so it dropped right in almost on the first rotation. We bumped it, so that was lucky. And now I've connected it up and uh, taken it for a test spin. And it does operate, uh, making sure everything works before we put the outside screw back in. So that's an 832 self-tapping screw. I considered going up to number 10. But uh, I decided that I'm going to uh, do something different. Now, Red Green said that the handyman's secret weapon was duct tape. My father would tell you it was JB Weld. So I'm going to put some of that in the hole and put that thing in. And then on top of that, I'm going to use some silicone seal on the top and close up where the rubber uh, was touching it and then just generally make that difficult to wander out. It's not... Uh, under a high, high amount of stress, it's just there to keep the motor from popping up. So it's more like a pin. There's a screw back in place with the JB weld holding it in. I used the quick set stuff, so it'll cure it enough here in a few minutes. There, I finished it off with a little bit of silicone seal just to be sure that it doesn't pop out of there. And now we can. Put the screws back in and put her all back together. Getting that D seal channel back on there was no fun either. Um, lesson learned, I don't see any reason why you'd have to take that off. You could have just peeled this whole thing or pulled this thing back after you disconnected that wire and left the main cable in the channel. There's no reason to take that out. So if you're doing this again, don't take it out. I'm going to put a little bit of silicon on there to replace the double stick tape and then close the door up and then let it dry there. I should say deploy it out not close it up. When I went to operate the slide after I replaced the motor they would both start off and go just fine and then one of them would quit. So that's uh, normal it's uh, because they're out of sync now. Um, before I checked with uh, Lippert as to how to get that back in, I figured out that I would just un disconnect one of the motors every once in a while and bring the other side in and keep inching it back in until I got it back in. I might not have had to do that. Um, I think you can just go back and forth, back and forth, uh, in and out, and then go more in than out. Um, but in the end, I got it all the way in, and then uh, once in, I had to recalibrate, resynchronize it by bringing it out two inches, bringing it back, bringing it out two inches, bringing it back, and bringing it out two inches, bringing it back. That's all you got to do. There's a lot of disinformation out there about how to do this. Um, if you go right to the Lippert uh, website, 
um, their YouTube will tell you exactly how to do it, which is very simple. Well, that wraps up the repair. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. And in the famous words of Red Green, remember, if it ain't broken, you're not trying hard enough.